Jason Parkin as we welcome Nez Presnell here with us. He's the executive director of the Clayton Behavioral Addiction Medicine Center. And uh, you were in town for a very uh, important reason. Uh, the Governor's Conference for Substance Abuse is actually the 38th annual conference. 38th annual. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. quite a, a long history. Yes. Of the governor working with that. And explain mm -hmm. uh, where and when. So it uh, actually started this morning. Registration was this morning. It'll be running for uh, today and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. at the Veterans Memorial um, Convention Center. There you go. So what happens as, as a part of these next couple of days? So uh, practitioners um, and other stakeholders in uh, prevention and treatment of substance abuse come together for two days of talks and um, there's a lot of breakout sessions and basically every um, aspect of drug abuse prevention and treatment is looked at. So who around here do you think would be the big participants in that? That would be like the Powell people and... Yeah, all your treatment providers, uh, mostly treatment providers. People go there to get their continuing education to make sure that they're up to date on the most uh, advanced um, and uh, recent trends in treatment and prevention. No, you're from a, a location outside of the uh, Des Moines area. Yep, St. Louis, Missouri. Nah, how long have you been associated with those guys? Um, so I've been the executive director there for uh, about a year and a half, uh, mm -hmm. and I was a clinical director at another treatment center, so I spent a lot of my time uh, working with uh, families affected by addiction. So how have we advanced? What new treatments are available out there that they're going to be learning about over the next couple of days? Yeah, so um, you know, my talk is actually on medication-assisted treatment, um, and a lot of people don't know that there are FDA-approved pharmacotherapies, medications for uh, addiction. So. You know, if someone comes to treatment for addiction, oftentimes they're uh, encouraged to engage in mutual support. They might get some counseling, um, but it's it's still somewhat rare that they're offered medication. And the studies are pretty convincing that medication can really be a game changer for people. Would that just be an antidepressive type medication, or what type of medications are we talking about? Antidepressants can really help uh, if someone has co-occurring depression. But actually, these are specifically for drug addiction. So for alcoholism, for instance, there's three FDA-approved medications. Oh, that, there are that decrease cravings. So, you know, in a, in a field like ours where people go through treatment over and over again oftentimes, um, having something that just decreases cravings a bit can really help people stay the course. Um, they're not silver bullets, you know, mm -hmm. but if even if you can, you know, with any chronic illness, if you can reduce symptoms by, say, 20%, that really helps the person in their overall treatment plan. And so this, that's what the studies show, that if someone takes a medication, it can really help. If you just get by that one initial craving to get you to the next the next point in exactly. your life, you, then you don't fall back. Exactly, and it's it's not as though you can take a medication and it goes away. But like you said, if if you have if your cravings are reduced, you might better engage in the other forms of treatment, the counseling, the groups, the didn't mutual even hear support. about this. No, this isn't this is something totally different than the other medication that was available where you got sick in case you drank. Right? So that's one of the three. One oh, of the that three, one of the yeah, three? that's called antabuse or disulfiram, and um, it's also a very effective medication. You know, that, that, would, that would stop you from <laughs> yeah, drinking if you get you violently, get violently ill yeah. in case yeah. you drink. Yeah. Mm. You know, when it first came out, it was like, oh, let's put everybody on this, and uh, you know, sometimes people have taken sort of punitive approach, and that does not work. If someone doesn't want to take their medication, they're not going to take their medication. Right. But for highly motivated people, it can, it can be a real lifesaver. I've known uh, people for whom antabuse has saved their life. Um, they were just, uh, one young woman was at the point of suicide. She said she tried so hard. She had been going to all her groups. She had been meeting with her counselor. But she had some co-occurring mental health conditions that made her more compulsive. And it was harder to get that thought of alcohol out of her brain. Mm -hmm. well, one day, after a near suicide, she walked into her doctor and she said, I want this medication. I want an abuse. She got on an abuse and uh, two years later, I was presenting with her at a conference. She had graduated from a master's program and she was herself becoming a counselor. Wow. So, That's I mean, great. it can be a real game changer for people. And it's just important that people are aware of it as now, an option. That's important yeah. when, when it comes to becoming counselors for people that are in substance abuse uh, in, in a different programs. Is yeah. it, if somebody who's a counselor was in their shoes, if they were uh, if they were a substance abuser in the past, they know what you're talking about, correct? Well, that's the thing, right? That uh, people in the uh, addiction treatment field, there t it tends to be existing silos. So there are people like me who have been kind of brought up uh, thinking of medication-assisted treatment as a really key intervention. But at the same time, there are people that are brought up to be really distrustful of medications in the addiction field, and for good reason. I mean, the, the history of, of medical treatment of addiction has not always been a good one. Um, so um, it's really important now that uh, people learn about these medications and that we break down some of the barriers between the people that are just you know, pure psychosocial support and mutual support and those that uh, really advance medications. Well, let's say someone's watching and they have a friend or a family member that they think sh should seek some help. What advice would you give them? Is that going to the doctor and asking about these medications or what's the first step of making sure they are on the right path? Yeah, ask your treatment provider, uh, your, your primary care physician, where they would recommend that you go to treatment. You might, if you think you have an alcohol problem, you might even ask your doctor, say, 
say, hey, you know, I've heard about these medications. I'd really like to try to cut down on my drinking even, and, and the medications can be helpful for that. Um, you know, I also just want to touch on, because I've been talking about alcoholism, and that is, you know, alcoholism is one of the big problems in Iowa, um, but it, you know, prescription opioid abuse has been a uh, real, has, has grown over the last 10 years exponentially. Uh, it's become one of the most treated problems. Um, and there are a few medications for that as well. And so people need to know that if they're struggling with prescription opioid uh, dependence, that they really should uh, seek medical attention and say, hey, how, how can I get access to medications for these cravings? Because, you know, results for psychosocial treatment for alcohol are actually a bit better than results for psychosocial treatment for opioid dependence, which is a really difficult addiction to break. So treatment now would involve more than just the meetings. You now yeah. have uh, medicine to back it up. Other exactly. Options. Exactly. Wonderful. Okay. Well, great. Well, uh, have good luck in, in your uh, endeavors here in the next couple of days. Uh, and here's what's going on. I Iowa Event Center, uh, of course, uh, we all know, the Vets Auditorium, that's what we call it. Anyway, Governor's Substance Abuse Conference going on today and tomorrow till about 4 in the afternoon. Wonderful. Yeah, well, thank you for being here. Thank nice you for having me. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. It is 8.30. We'll be back. You're watching Great Day live in Des Moines.